Today on Queensland Weekender, tourism operators across the state are suffering and need your help. We've got ideas on how to get out and do your bit to get them back on their feet. I know I'm in the beef capital, but I'm going to buck the trend and have some lamb. Thank you. And it's as easy as taking a holiday locally. Oh, it smells amazing. Hello again, welcome to Queensland Weekender for another Saturday afternoon, it's good to have your company. Well there's no doubt that the start of 2011 will be forever remembered as a dark part of Queensland's history with cyclones and floods giving the state a real hammering. You know, the tourism operators are among the hidden victims in all of this, receiving these days more cancellations than they are new bookings. While during the floods, 75% of our state of Queensland was declared a disaster zone. But did you know that only 1% of our state's tourism assets was actually affected? The majority of those attractions are open and ready to welcome you, so now is the time to get out and support them. The Whitsunday region is one of those areas that remained relatively unscathed through all of the drama. And as Kimberley found out, you don't even need to leave the mainland to unwind. Ellie Beach is known as the gateway to the Whitsundays, but this little town isn't just a springboard to those magnificent islands. You see, if you can get past the boats and the sailing, the backpackers and the hustle and bustle of the main street, then you will find that there's so much more to discover. In a world, there is so much to see. For those after some peace and quiet, a hidden oasis of tranquility sits just a short stroll from downtown Airlie. The Wit Sunday Organic Bed and Breakfast. Hello, Kimberly. Hi. Welcome to Thank the Wit Sundays. Come inside. Here, it's all about taking time out to relax and centre yourself. And they tell me, in no time, I'll be feeling energised, invigorated, and above all, relaxed. There is an assortment of things to do to just melt those stresses away. You can spend time in this custom-built meditation teepee. You can hang out on the veranda and look at that gorgeous view or book in for an essential oils massage. Now, that definitely sounds like me. Massage therapist Anne Gardner uses treatments based on age-old techniques. This is a Valor oil. It's for balancing the body. Anne tells me this raindrop technique is inspired by Native American beliefs. She says it can help to bring my body back into alignment and may even help with back pain. The Zen master of this eco-friendly sanctuary is Janet Kepke. After travelling the world for years, she couldn't think of a better place to establish her unique B&B. Janet, what prompted you to move to Ellie Beach? I think because it's a beautiful area. It's just a lovely area to be. You can work and then you can relax at the same time as well. And how did the organic concept come into it? Um, I think orga organic products are the way we should be going. I think we should be eating natural food. I think we should be eating the food closer that we make and grow closer to home um, and I think organic epitomises that. Janet practices what she preaches and gets many of her herbs and spices from her own organic garden. This is our stone courtyard where we grow all our herbs and spices oh, great. and we grow these specially for our Indian curry nights that we have. Oh yum! Once a week we have a curry evening or a restaurant night and um, we're well known around town. All the locals come and the visitors stay as well. Do you think that there's a difference in the taste being organic? Definitely. Yeah. Yes, it's much, um, it's not changed. It's just how it comes from the garden, I think, because it's so fresh. For organic ingredients not grown in the garden, there is a small shop on site open to visitors and the general public. It supplies everything from flour and milk to soaps and even organic wine. Now, as you've probably guessed, one of the biggest draw cards about an organic B&B is the organic food. So I've picked some Thai coriander, some oh, Thai basil. This is going to be so yummy. 
In the kitchen, you're likely to find Janet's son, Andrew Watt, who's the restaurant manager. His breakfasts are top notch, but he's known around town for his weekly organic curry nights. He combines fresh herbs and spices from the garden and creates traditional dishes like the Indian panch paron and is happy to pass on a few tips. I've never cooked an authentic curry before. Have you? No. Okay. Well, you can slowly start oh, smelling. It smells amazing. So this is releasing all the flavours, This isn't is it? releasing all the flavours in it. Okay. You don't have to be a guest at the Wit Sunday Organic B&B to join them for their curry nights every Wednesday. But do make sure you call ahead and book in. For the full experience, why not check in and immerse yourself in the tranquility of this unique property? As well as a passion for all things organic, Janet is a bit of a sailing buff and she tells me that she can organise any tour that I like. But for now, I've got a feast to devour. Wood Sunday accommodation providers have done an amazing job donating free rooms to those made homeless during the recent Queensland floods. To date, $180,000 worth of accommodation has been given to the Premier's Relief Appeal. Well done, guys. Now stick with us because coming up after the break, the show must go on. I'm not just talking about Queensland Weekender, there's a bevy of events to be run throughout the state in the next few months and we'll take a look at some of them shortly. See you then. Straight down. Chew him up, a bit like uh, a mixture of... Floor, don't blame him. <laughs> Is it like <laughs> onion, onion, onion custard? Yeah. Don't like that? No, I don't. Don't you? <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Well, it's fair to say that Queenslanders' resilience has been well and truly tested so far this summer, but I'm happy to say most of the essential services are up and running again normally. Airports are open in Queensland, including Rockhampton post floods, and I'm happy to say that coastal train services are returning to regular schedules. So expect no delays on either tilt trains or the Sunlander. The inlander train from Townsville to Mount Isa is also operating as per normal. The spirit of the outback and Westlander tracks sustain damage, but the routes are being serviced by buses whilst repairs are still underway. Flood affected roads are reopening every day. The best way to get an up to date report of road conditions is to log on to the RACQ website. Of course, if you do encounter any delays on your road trip, please remember to be patient. Well, the start of the year is always busy when it comes to events in Queensland and 2011, despite disasters, will be no different. Here are a couple to whack in your diary. When the flood swallowed the town of Chinchilla twice in two weeks, it may have battered and bruised a few melons, but it certainly didn't destroy the festival spirit. The annual Chinchilla Melon Festival is getting into full swing for next weekend with a generous amount of watermelons imported from South Australia. Get amongst the wacky melon action like watermelon skiing, melon bungee and the very popular head smashing melon competition. The Queensland Weekender crew will be there covering the event, so keep an eye out for the story in coming weeks. If you can't get enough of Queensland fruit, make sure you head to Feast of the Senses, a yearly tradition in Innisfail, just an hour's drive from Cairns. Cyclone Yassi may have decimated the banana crops, but with help from around the country, there'll be plenty of other exotic fruits to sink your teeth into. North Queensland does indeed put on the biggest and brightest fruit display. So be sure to get a taste of a dragon fruit, a rambutan or even a durian, which our mate Scotty Hillier from Crete to Coast had a bit of trouble with when he visited the festival last year. Like onion, onion, onion custard? Yeah. Don't like that? No, I don't. Don't you? <laughs> and don't think it's just all about fruit. Make your way to the Market Day Extravaganza when Innisfail's Main Street is lined with meats, sweets and plenty of other delightful treats. 
Get along and help out this lovely seaside town as the community rebuilds all that was lost. Much of the state's land might have been wiped out, but some delicate eggs in nesting grounds at the famous Monrepo beach were untouched and still waiting for that perfect time to hatch. Expect to see a record number of hatchlings waddle their way out to sea, with this season being the biggest season for nesting turtles in over 30 years. Head to this turtle haven just 15 minutes out of Bundaberg to witness the amazing journey of one small but courageous creature. It was actually better than I thought in my yeah. head, you know, yeah. to see these, uh, these little hatchlings flow out like lava. Help these incredible animals find their way. The Bundaberg Region website has all the details. And if you'd like to help Queensland back on its feet, visit the likes of Chinchilla or Innisfail and show your support by taking part in our state's upcoming events. Stay with us because after the break, Chris takes the plunge to see how South East Queensland's underwater tourism assets are faring post-flood. Swim out to the dive bay, you know, drop down to the bottom and we're going to put what we learned in the pool into action in the ocean. Alright, All right. So <laughs> I've remembered everything. Welcome back to Queensland Weekender. Well, after the South East Queensland floods, there were plenty of pictures of that cloudy bloom through Moreton Bay, but I'm happy to report that the ocean is a big place, and with each passing tide, things are looking better. So much so that South East Queensland dive operators are reporting terrific visibility at most South East Queensland dive locations, so Chris Parsons has gone out there to suit up and check it out. You know, for me, the idea of becoming a certified scuba diver had always seemed a faraway dream and would never become a reality, only because I thought it'd be too hard to get into, take up too much time to learn and definitely too expensive. But as I found out, that is not the case because today is the day I become certified. And it all started two weeks ago. There's only so many times you can watch people descend into the depths of the ocean and be a part of scenes such as this without saying the words to yourself, I want to do that. So, I got online, I found a place in Brisbane, picked up the phone and spoke to a bloke called Mick Wheatley. Hey, g'day Chris, how are you going? Mick runs Brisbane Dive Academy, which is in Tegalpa on Brisbane's south side. Once you've done that, then you come in and we start off on the first Saturday morning. Awesome. All right, one chat with Mick and misconceptions about scuba diving blown out of the water. No pun intended. Firstly, the expense. It's only going to cost $479. Now, that's for the opportunity of diving around this great planet of ours. And secondly, the time. He assures me you can get it done in just three days, and you can do it in the comfort of your own home. The good people at Paddy have now made it possible to do the theory side of the open water online. Now, it should essentially take about eight hours to complete. So, make yourself a coffee, get comfy, and get into it. The beauty is you can take as long as you want to complete it and do it anywhere, anytime. And when that's done, head in to see Mick for a quick review. So all I want you to do is just go through its multiple choice, uh -huh. uh, pick the best answer out of those. Yep. There's 18 questions and what we'll do is once you've done that, we'll mark it. You've got to get 75% on this. Yep. The quicker you get it done, the quicker we get to the water. All right, cool. I'm on. Name. I can answer that. 